Hi guys, Greg at Best Choice Trailers. Today we're going to take a walk around the Big Tech 16 LP. This is a 7 by 16 foot, 16,000 pound, or Big Tech is going to rate this at 17,500, counting some tongue weight in. But again, the 16 LP, this is a high side with 4 foot sides. And most everything else you see here is going to all be standard equipment. Let's take a walk around the trailer. We'll show you everything it has to offer. This trailer is going to weigh in at about 4,950 pounds. That would be with standard sides. High sides here are going to weigh a couple hundred pounds more than that. They GVW the trailer at 17.5. That's going to give a net payload of about 12.5. It's actually going to be a hair north of that because they're counting in 1,500 pound of uh, tongue weight when in reality it's going to be more than that most likely. Uh, if you do scale it, so long as you're not over 8,000 pounds on either of those two axles, uh, you're good on the trailer side. So again, 16 LP by Big Tex. Up front, 2 and 5 16 inch Demco Easy Latch Coupler. It's got a six hole, four adjustment setup up front. Uh, a lot of times you'll see a standard breakaway. This actually has the zip breakaway, which is pretty slick. Don't got to worry about it dragging on the road. Uh, back to the coupler, I guess. This is the easy latch if you've never used it. Uh, as you lower uh, the trailer jack, it actually will auto latch. You just got to put your pin in for your safety. This has the bigger 12K jack on it for standard equipment. If you've never had a 12K jack before, there's a pin, release, pull that out. It will spring up. If you've got stones uh, laying on the foot pad, might want to turn your head to the side or it will throw them up toward your face. Uh, safety uh, chain, standard equipment, of course. You've got a keeper uh, back here. You can also do what I do. Just a little bit more convenient. Put them up front right on the channel itself. You've got a 7-pin plug. It's an RV blade style, typical on most every truck built in the last, say, 20 years. It is a blue cord, which is a cold-weather wiring cord. Stays flexible down to negative 65. But I wanted to point out, if you can see, the, uh, the prongs actually have an uh, indicator uh, embossed into the end of the plug, which is nice. Most don't. You've got to probe it and see what it belongs to, but uh, on these, uh, kind of nice that they're all indicated. 110 volt charger, standard equipment. Of course, you've got your latch assembly. Keys would be on the back side of the lock assembly. Uh, one nice feature a lot of manufacturers aren't going to do is put your battery in a battery box, which just makes it nice. You don't got to worry about uh, what happens if you throw a, str a strap or something in here. It's actually a, a cord, uh, so if you want, you can hook that on the center of your tarp, throw it to the back, and pull it back. But that is in the box. Uh, you can tell it's a power up, power down, because it's got a two-coil setup. And speaking of the two coils, I will point out, let me put this up a little bit. So some pumps have this, the majority don't. You're going to start seeing them over the next handful of years. Uh, but if we take and twist this. It's going to lower down the bed. So basically if you're in a low battery situation as pretty much every customer is going to get at some point in time well first of all there's a charger that we can charge the battery then and i guess from that same point i point out typically most manufacturers are going to use a five amp hour charger some might use a two or a eight but five is the most common group 24 deep cycle marine batteries the most common battery it's going to be about a 140 amp hour do the math, 140 divided by a 5 amp hour charger, you're going to need to charge for a full day to top off a dead battery. Uh, dump cycles, depends how big a trailer, somebody might get two. If you, you know, your, your legal capacity, it's winter right now, you might only get two or three dump cycles out of this. If it's summer and it's a load of sawdust or mulch, you might get 10. But anyway, uh, charge the battery uh, about a full day to top it off. If you get in a low battery situation, 
you may have fluid come out the top. This is actually an overflow reservoir. Uh, if you don't have the battery to turn the pump, but, but it uh, will open up a coil. The coil is basically your gatekeeper. Gate opens, it's gonna allow fluid to get through. Gravity is gonna take care of lowering the bed. It's just not gonna circulate the fluid in the, in the manner that it would normally. Because remember, power up, power down, it's moving fluid from one side of the system out and then coming back. So if it's not coming back, so motor's not on, it's just gonna shoot the fluid out the overflow reservoir. Well, in a low battery situation, this is what you would wanna do. Simply crack uh, that valve, and basically it's gonna end up sending signal to the other side so that they both open at the same time. And then without the motor in a downward situation only, it's gonna open them both up, let it come down, whether you have battery or not. It's just gonna save you from having, having to um, get fluid for the for the trailer in a low battery setup uh gas shock on the toolbox which is nice you've got a, a lead for the battery or uh, the yeah the cord to come out so you don't mess it up if you put the the box down uh they do grommet going out of the box which is nice you'd be surprised how many manufacturers don't do that uh one of the things that i want to show you So underneath here, uh, a lot of manufacturers more and more are using what we'd refer to as a mono frame or maybe a uni frame, single piece frame. Traditionally, we had a tongue and then a main frame that would start here and they would be stacked and whatnot. I-beam is strong. It is nice. A lot of manufacturers, though, are going to have a square box and then they're going to have a tongue and it's basically going to be cut and reinforced here. Uh, Big Tech's on this actually has rolled this, so there is no cut, there is no splice, and I will say we have had over the years, not too much recently, but years ago we had issues for manufacturers that cut and splice the I-beam, and uh, not a ton, but we had, we had repaired some trailers uh, right in that area where they were cut. Now this one, again, there's nothing cut here, so I want to point that out. That's solid and continuous all the way back. I really like that on these, just knowing that we have had a few issues in the past. Not a high you know, percentage, but a handful. Uh, tarp kit is standard equipment. It is not a black iron uh, on the tarp itself. The sail bar here, which a lot of manufacturers still don't do sail bars, but they are nice because you can grab that with one hand and walk it to the back. Keeps your tarp nice and straight. Uh, a lot of manufacturers still don't do the sail bar but again the tarp is the nicer it's a bought tarp kit it's got a bearing set um, spring latch assembly and then your sail bar actually sets up there uh, when in use there's hooks to the rear here that that would go in you've got a rear riser that keeps your tarp up off your material a little bit uh, on this particular unit you've got a boxed in top rail so unlike a lot of manufacturers that roll it over, that's actually fully boxed in. Uh, you've got your vertical stiffeners on roughly three and a half foot centers. You've got a double broke tread plate fender with a fender center support. Slipper spring suspension. Uh, this unit's equipped with upgraded 8,000 pound axles. They are Dexter brand axles as well, not, uh, not a, an off brand or whatnot. Um, Oil bath hubs are standard. Sometimes on 8Ks you'll get oil, some you'll get grease. This is the oil. Uh, even though a 14-ply 16-inch tire is, uh, I'll say, all an 8,000-pound axle calls for, they've upgraded to a 215-17.5. This is a 16-ply, not a, not a 14 that you would see on the 16-inchers. And this is uh, 48, normally they're rated for about 4,800 pounds, 4,805. So you've got give or take 19,000 and some odd pounds of tire, even though this has two 8,000 pound axles. So you got tons of tire on this. Again, it's a solid wheel. Uh, four foot sidewalls. So again, I said 17 fives with a GVW to four, net payload of 12,670. I said that's a very conservative uh, number for your payload. You've got J hooks down the sides for uh, taking a bungee to your tarp. 
uh, pretty slick the way they've done the rear, um, your actual marker light. They put a skateboard grip tape on it so you can actually use that to step up and grab that tarp at the rear. Uh, it is a combination gate, even though it's the high side, you can actually still spread with it. It's got a reinforcement on the center of the gate. It's got the boxed in top rail. It's got zerts on your hinges. It's got undermount ramps. They also put jack stands standard. A lot of manufacturers will prep it, but they don't actually give you the jack stands. Give you a nice little handle for them. Uh, very simple, the way the gate comes open. Basically, it just latches to your J. Very easy to use setup. Stake pockets going down the sides if you need to build your sides up or for an additional tie down point. Spare tire mount on the passenger side front, standard equipment. Spare tire is not. Uh, you can ask our sales guys. Generally, we try to have spares for everything in stock. You get just a little bit longer tongue. Traditionally, a dump tongue uh, is about four and a half feet, maybe five. This one looks to be about five and a half. Uh, probably lengthen just a little bit based on what most guys are gonna be hauling uh, these with. Sometimes you get some different equipment. I'll open up the doors here. Inside the bed, you've got a seven gauge floor. Standard in the industry generally is gonna be uh, 10 gauge. They go a little heavier on the floor here. Also notice uh, that is a one piece sheet. It's not seamed together. Uh, so it's all seven gauge, one piece sheet, 16 foot. You've got your sides, D-rings in the four corners. Take the time to silicone your joints up here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put this up quick for you. So this is a scissor hoist. This is also available with a telescopic uh, hoist. One thing I'll point out that I do like before we get too far up, this bed frame is nestled inside the main frame. So if you look at the main frame, the bed frame is sitting inside. That gets you down about four inches without sacrificing anything. A lot of times, uh, historically, if you wanted it to get down four inches, you would have to use drop axles. Uh, that is a nice way with that nestled bed frame that you can get your deck height down a little bit without using drop axles. Drop axles uh, tend to be maybe a little bit, I'll say, uh, less durable than the straight axle that's on these. You've got your scissor hoist, undermount ramps. See that the uh, scissors got a safety prop up front. So if you need to use your work on your hydraulics, uh, you've got a tube crossbar at the front of the scissor. You've got a reinforcement gusset on either side, wiring, it's all ran in your frame. You've got what looks to be about a four by six tubular crossbar behind the scissor. You've also got a tubular crossbar on your scissor on the bedside as well. So again, reinforced where uh, it needs to be, I'll call it. Uh, if you look, Dexter Axles, standard. Uh, Lippert also makes a nice 8K axle. I think the, the, uh, the, your beams on the Dexters are just a little bit heavier from what we've experienced. Uh, but both make a decent 8K axle. But I will point, these are Dexters. Uh, Dexters do cost a good bit more on the 8Ks uh, for sure. So I'll point that out because they are spending some extra money in that area for you. Uh, Going to get to about a... 47 degree angle, I believe, on this particular size and unit. Gives you another shot of the seven gauge floor. We do keep quite a few different configurations in stock on our heavy duty 16K plus. Generally, we'll stock scissors and tellies. We'll do them in uh, pinnel or deck or pinnel or uh, bumper pulls. We also keep them in stock in goosenecks. We do some four foot sides like this, but then we also keep some in three foot sides as well. 
Uh, if this isn't what you're looking for, we do keep about 1,300 in stock trailers. I'm sure we've got something that'll work if this isn't the one for you. Uh, you can check our website at www.bestchoicetrailers.com or you can feel free to give us a ring at 717-220-4220. Thanks for looking.